Hey, Josh and Wyatt, thanks uh, for taking the time for today. Uh, just to start, what has it been like the last two months for you guys? What what have you been able to do? What have the workouts been like? And, and how have you managed to survive the last couple months? Uh, hey, appreciate you guys all uh, coming on. This is Josh, by the way. Um, appreciate you guys all coming on. Just wanted to first say I uh, hope everybody's doing well, staying safe. Uh, hope everybody's family is getting healthy. Um uh, last couple months has been hard, uh, as I'm sure it, it has been for everybody else. Um, you know, I think I think Zoom meetings, um, you know, and, and staying in touch with the guys as much as possible has, has kind of kept me sane. Um, in terms of, of working out, I think everybody's just doing the best that they can. Um, you know, I'm fortunate to have a uh, you know, pretty good uh, amount of, of weights where I can pretty much do everything I need to do. Uh, in the in the weight room, maybe not quite as good as a as Ohio State's weight room, obviously, but uh, you know I'm still able to get a good bit done. Um, so you know, other than that, you know, just trying to stay sane, uh, keeping up with you know schoolwork, and you know I got internships and, and all kinds of stuff I'm trying to keep up with. So thankfully, I'm not just sitting here doing nothing all day, um, and that's really kept me sane to this point. Yeah, and um, as for me, it's it's kind of you know it's been the same. Uh, so unfortunately, I, I was able to find a place that I sent in Josh where I was. I got a lot of weights in there. Obviously, it's not the same working out um, at Ohio State, but um, you know it's definitely been a great spot. Um, only thing that's been tough over here in California has just been finding open fields and. <laughs> not getting kicked off of them. But um, I was also kind of able to find one within the last couple of days. So hopefully uh, hopefully it will stay consistent and we're still allowed to be on there. But like Josh said, though, I feel like everyone's been just trying to uh, keep busy, you know. And now that school has kind of started back up, it's been able to kind of take my mind off this whole thing but you know this this truly is a weird time right now and I think that we've been doing mm-hmm. our best at you know trying to make the most out of the situation that we're dealt with with the Zoom calls and the Zoom meetings so and yeah. Josh when you talk Josh when you were talking I mean you both talked about the Zoom meetings how much of those are you know football related with stud how much of it has nothing to do with football and you guys just wanting to just talk and be in communication what's the balance there yeah it's uh i think you can tell coach stud uh, misses us um you know and obviously wishes that you know we were around and able to be normal um you know pretty much every meeting starts with casual conversation i i know a ton of you know in our offensive line hop on the meeting earlier than we should or earlier than we have to, I should say. Um, and I think a lot of us do that just because we want to, you know, kind of talk and, and ev- you know, everybody's on there time so we can talk and just laugh and, and have a couple minutes before the meeting starts. And then uh, a lot of times, too, uh, Coach Stud will you know, join in on the conversation for a couple minutes before we get to business and, and just, you know, check in on everybody and, and, and laugh and talk. Um, so so that we do that all the time, actually. Um, you know, and then when it's time to get to work, it's time to get to work. Um, but, you know, there's all where we we don't talk about, you know, anything really. Why it's all mental. It's all, um, you know, stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, we, we you can tell we all miss it, you know, just by, by the way our meetings start. Thanks, guys. Great. And I'll just Thank remind you. folks, if uh, except for – and Wyatt, uh, and the uh, person asking the question, if we could uh, mute your phones. Uh, we'll move on to uh, Bill Benowitz from the Close Dispatch with Bill Landis on deck. Bill? Yes, this is for Wyatt. Wyatt, first of all, my condolences on, on the passing of your grandfather. Um, could you kind of describe what he meant to you and and just how you're dealing with everything? Yeah, no, definitely. Um you know, it, it it was obviously very tough um, when when he passed. But 
you know, unfortunately, my granddad was kind of struggling with health for the past couple of years now. Um, so we knew eventually it was coming. But, uh, you know, my granddad was pretty much essentially my, my hero growing up. He was, he was definitely in love with my man. Just his story of pretty much basically how he came from nothing and, like, it just seemed like he was, like, the underdog kind of his whole entire life, especially getting drafted that late. But he got – I want to say he got drafted, like, the 16th or 17th round of the NFL and then to have a Hall of Fame career after being drafted that late. And to do what he did outside of the football realm, like, in the business world, to be so successful. And like, what a lot of people don't know is, you know, my granddad was – more successful and made more earnings outside of football than he was when he was playing. And just type of work ethic is inspiring, you know. Um, he he didn't let people put him in a box um, of just being an athlete. And he broke outside of that box and – it's extremely successful. And just growing up, he was always around, <clears throat> especially with me and my brother. He, he treated us so good, um, you know. And then that's why it was just so hard when he passed just because it was it, – well, and it was hard when he passed, but it was even harder seeing him in the state that he was in just because that's not the granddad, you know, that I remember in the hospital bed and that whole thing. And then, you know, the timing of it when he was sick in the hospital, this whole Corona thing broke out. And then we had to get him out the hospital because they needed rooms for, for, uh, you know, this whole Corona thing. So, you know, there was just a lot uh, going on, but, um, you know, for the most part, I would say that me and my family handled it well just because we, we focused more so on the positive of his life, you know. Um, especially when he played, it, it's very unheard of for people of his generation to even live as long as he did. And, um, you know, I, I'm very appreciative, just like the rest of my family, of each sex I was able to handle something because, man, he was just amazing to me. Yeah, could you kind of describe your your personal relationship with him and also how much uh gratification was there that, that he got to succeed uh at the college level the way he did last year? Yeah, so my personal relationship with my granddad, uh <laughs> you know, I, I every time I come back home I'm going to see him. Um you know, he was like a second fa- <clears throat> he was like a second father to me and to me and my brother. Um, you know, I was football. He held me and my brother to very high standards because he knew what we were capable of. And, you know, for me it was just because I, I knew that he could never actually physically go to one of my games. I knew that he was always watching. And, you know, hearing him, uh, you know, his wife Carol, would always send me a video of him after the game saying congratulations for all, on some of our wins this year and um, even at the end of the season, just him saying how proud of me he was. Uh, you know, it was it was awesome. I, you know, it almost made me tear up hearing that just because he he's my idol. As far as football, like he's what I want to be as a football player and as a businessman. So to to hear congratulate me on anything I do, um, just made me feel above and beyond. But um, he was like a second father to me. Well, thanks, Mike. And again, Mike, condolences. Um, Next up, uh, Bill Landis, if you're on board uh, with Nathan Baird on deck. All right, 
to move on to Nathan Baird from Cleveland.com with Jared Smalley on deck. Nathan? Thanks, Jerry, and thanks. Um, Josh, you mentioned the, having workout equipment at home. That was why you did, too. And um, We talked to Coach Marotti yesterday about how people are kind of improvising things, you know, uh, dirt in the milk jugs and rocks in the backpack and stuff. But even he had mentioned, uh, acknowledged that offensive linemen probably need more than that. Why do you feel like it's important that you have access to, to more than that as, as offensive linemen, and how um, are you trying to, I guess, take advantage of, of what could be an advantage with the access you have that maybe other players don't? <clears throat> yeah, I think um, offensive line play is just so different from really any other in sport, um, you know, just because you need to have athleticism and the ability to move, but you also have to be powerful enough, um, you know, to move large grown men um, when they don't want to be moved, um, which is, you know, really there's, there's no, no other position like it in sports. Um, so, yeah, there, there are pieces of equipment and things that we do um, at Ohio State of linemen that is critical in developing our guys and, and staying on top of our game. Um, and really, some of those things I don't have access to. Um, you know, there, there are things like the – you guys, I don't even know if you guys have noticed it, but there's a, a sled um, in the very corner um, that the offensive line we hit all the time when, you know, we don't add um, – I think Coach Dub was telling us the other day it's like 300 pounds or something like that, and – um, we hit it and it, it helps us to work on driving our feet after contact. Um, you know, it's things like that. So it's a really heavy sled and we don't have pads on, we're not hitting people, but we're driving that sled and we punch it and we have to drive our feet through contact, um, you know, which breaks a really bad habit that a, line, a lot of linemen have where they cut their feet when they hit somebody. So it's things like that that we have to try and improvise and work on as linemen. Um, you know, from the, from the lifting side, we have a lot of the things that we need. But when it comes to drills, um, we just don't have those resources. Luckily for me, I have my brother. He played uh, football at Kentucky, um, and so he, you know, he can still he can still he could still play. I mean, he's he's uh he's in good shape. So me and him do all kinds of drills together, and and luckily I'm I have him and. And I'm able to still work on a lot of that stuff. It's just, you know, not with equipment, you know, just on a person. He kind of takes that hit for me. <laughs> Why uh, is yeah, um, same for you? Like, what are you? Yeah, so, uh, yeah, there, there definitely is a lot more that goes into offensive line training than, than just the weights. Um, and I feel like the reason my coach Mikas has been saying that is just because of the fact that I need to have great, you know, short, quick um, ability and kind of the state that now, at least for me, that's kind of one of the things I've been trying to focus on the most is just trying to find a field to mimic uh, um, a game, like a drive, like a 10-play drive or um, or just even just simply working on like my pass set and stuff like that just because it, it is just so important that you play an offensive line that you keep harping on those um, those things just because with muscle memory and stuff like that, you know, you, you can tend to get sloppy if you're not going to work on things for a long period of time. And uh, for me, I just want to make sure that I'm as crisp as I can be um, when it's time to come back and that um, you'll have the same or at least somewhat that same short quickness ability that I had before this Corona thing took place. And just being in, in good conditioning. Um, you know, you could lift all the weights you want, but if, if you can't last a 10-plus play drive, essentially um, pointless being that strong. So definitely being – I feel like it's a combination of finding that place where you're you're at a very good strength place as well as being conditioned, which is kind of hard to do right now um, with all that's going on. 
Thanks a lot. Next up, Jared Smalley from WCH Channel 4 with Tim May on deck. Jared? Hey, guys. Uh, the question I have is for Wyatt, and Wyatt, this also came up yesterday in the news conference uh, that we had with Coach Marotti. Specifically mentioned you uh, when he was talking about players who had uh, sort of emerged as leaders uh, from a verbal standpoint in, in the, the brief time you had before uh, the, the, the uh, coronavirus break began, if you will. And he mentioned specifically the speech that you gave to the team, Wyatt. Can you go into a little bit of, of, of where that speech, where that fear is coming from, and just a little bit of what your message is to your teammates? Yeah, so, you know, where that fire came from was, I just feel like, like a bit of emotion, you know, how we finished this last season. Um, the speech that he's specifically talking about was in the winter, and it was at a critical point during the winter where we were doing mat drills for the first time. And this was the first time that we had multiple mat drills, like, days in a row. And getting graded on every one, they're going to be different than any mat drill that we've ever done before. Uh, it was called the Parabellum. I believe is what Coach Mick called it, the Parabellum. And, um, you know, I – I kind of just got tired of um, I'm sitting in the back of things. I mean, last year for me, I, in my head, I, I felt like I really ha- wasn't in a place where I could be as vocal as I should have been based off my time being a starter and really what I had done for the program at that point. So, you know, kind of after this season and, and playing – the way I did, and you know, ending um, on a high note, I felt like I had respect from my fellow teammates to be able to step in front of them and kind of just open my heart out. And essentially, what I was just saying during that was just, you know, we, we have a lot of there's a lot of guys in the world that say they want things and they want all this stuff to happen. There's not many of them that are willing to put in the work for it. And coming off of that loss this past season, I, I don't ever want to experience that again. You know, I was saying that um, the look in the seniors' eyes when they were crying was something that I will never forget for the rest of my life. And some of those guys, it was their last time they were even playing a football game. And, you know, that's how we went out. So, I was just telling them right now where we're at, this is a critical part of our season. And depending on how we do in the rules, will truly let us know where we're at. And I was saying, you know, that I, I'm willing to open my heart out for you guys. I'll do anything for your guys because I'm bought in. Uh, I'm bought in to all the other strength coaches and everyone on my coach and everyone on the program. And, and why one other thing on, on that subject, because of what you're going through now, because you're not together, because you don't have access to all the resources you have there, because you're separated, how how those words, how much impact do you think they have now? Maybe even more so, those, the adversity that you've, you've kind of tacked onto the team to, to be in that position you get to return, that you that you can be the team you Yeah, no, I... I think it definitely is more so now. I mean, the, the point of my message was being accountable, you know. Like, you, you, a lot of people say they want to be the best. Like, why a receiver, for instance? Well, are you taking extra steps and taking the extra risk to put yourself in that position? And right now, we're in a place where you're on your own. You have no one in your hand. I mean, the coaches are still texting you, but – at the end of the day, no one's really going to know what you're doing besides you. So I feel like hopefully that with what I had said, um, hopefully it still resonates. People are just using that as a reason to be accountable. And I, I can truly believe so that we have a lot of guys on our team that have been um, that have been accountable and have been going above and beyond working out right now. But, you know, like I said before, you – you don't truly know what everyone's doing, but 
I get the sense that people are really working and people want to be great. So, good deal. Thank you. Next up, Tim no May from Letterman Row with Dan Hope on deck. Tim. Thank you very much. I'm glad I got on today. Uh, sorry about yesterday, but uh, you know, why I'm with you on something. Uh, I got to go to a Green Bay Packers preseason camp back in 1964. Uh, as a youngster, I was 10 years old. Whatever. There were three guys that wanted autographs: Ray Nitschke, Bart Starr, and your your grandfather Willie Davis. And what was the only one I got was your grandfather's. <laughs> the other lines were too. But uh, but. Uh, as you think about it, uh, you know, did you ever get to see video or film of him playing? Because he played with a fire in his belly, for want of another term. Sense that you and, for whatever reason, have inherited that with that kind of that mean dog approach you have to playing a guard. Yeah, you know, that's kind of funny. I have seen in a lot of films, but you know, I definitely I, I've seen a. Uh, some film of when my granddad was playing, and you know, all I gotta say to that is thank God that uh, I didn't have to play against somebody like that up to this point yet. But yeah, um, yeah you know, I, I, my my granddad, and my dad, uh, growing up playing football, you know, they they, I feel like the reason why I have that fire is because with between both me and my brother is just that don't be complacent with where you're at and just don't be okay with just getting done, you know, because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. just getting the job done and, you know, relate to the real world. If you're just barely doing what you need to do to get by, then that's how you're going to be for – that's how you're going to be. You're just going to be barely doing enough to get by. So everything that we do, you know, we part of – my granddad has always told me to, you know, go 100%, go above and beyond, you know, and do what you need to do to be noticed. And, you know, I, 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 and that competitive nature, I feel like, is what drives me to be so competitive. And as far as the physical nastiness, um, game of football. And growing up, watching how my, hearing all the Wolf War stories about my granddad saying, you know, like, for instance, he wasn't wearing the mouthpiece because they didn't have to. And he sacked the quarterback, and he was telling me that he had all of his front teeth knocked out and still continued to play the game, you know. Yeah. And the fact that he, all the years he played, I want to say he only missed, or he might have never missed a day. I think he might have missed a game all the years he played. So just hearing that is toughness alone, I mean. And then that's, I feel like that's what you have to have playing football. You got to be tough. You got to be physical, and you got to be nasty. And you know, that's my granddad has told me playing the game, and and that's what I just do. Yeah, I know. Your grand, you always worry about generation whether they're going, they're going to have it so cushy. You know, whether they'll have that fire, but uh, clearly you do. Uh, wanted to ask you uh, both of you guys real quick. How much do you think this law, uh like you were talking about earlier, Josh, and and and, and why? How much this lull will actually affect you guys. I'm talking about the lull of being together as a group because you know the Marathi, uh, the Marathi camp. It's uh, it, you know it's world famous for keeping you guys generating the camaraderie and everything else. But uh, are you concerned about uh, when you guys finally do get back together, what the what what the, what it will feel like from the standpoint of the uh, fire of the camaraderie. I think, personally, um, I think the the camaraderie in the room and, and the feel in the room will be better than when it left. And I think huh. that's not to say it wasn't already great when we left. Um, but I think you you it's hard sometimes. You you get so into the to the routine of things that you can take things for granted, um, and then when you don't have it anymore. Um, you realize you know, that's just what you had was. And I think that's definitely going to be the general overall feel of our team when we get back together. That's the feel I get from meetings. Um, and, and I can't, I can't imagine it would be any other way than when we come back. I think, I think uh, it'll make our bond stronger, to be honest. 
Is that safe for you, Wyatt? Yeah, I was about to say that. that that's how I feel, too. I mean, you know, you, you can tell on every time we get on Zoom meetings and guys start cracking jokes and, you know, for like the first five minutes, everyone's just talking about how much they miss each other. So I, I think that it's going to be stronger just because this has truly shown us, you know, to appreciate what, what, we, what we have or what we had, you know, as far as just mm-hmm. even being able to sleep be in the facility and to eat with each other because, you know, this has shown us this whole pandemic that, you know, football and everything that comes with it can be taken away with just a a snap like this. And, uh, you know, I think it's just – I think overall people are more appreciative of what we got going on. Hey, thank you. Next up, Dan Hope from 11 Warriors with Dave Biddle on deck. Dan? Hey, guys, thanks for doing this. For both of you, you guys, veteran guys who, you know, were ex- leaders for this team this year, just what do you do in a situation like this to continue to be leaders even though you're around your teammates? Yeah. Um, for me, personally, um, I think when we do have meetings, being vocal, still teaching the young guys, um, you know, trying to be as helpful as like the coach stuff and, um, you know, doing, doing what we can, um, to to try and keep our guys accountable, but also, um, you know, showing our guys, especially the young guys, um, you know, care about them, that we love them, that we want to see them succeed. You know what I mean? We're one of the things that I think me, me and Wyatt could both agree is that we want to leave Ohio state, um, better, better than the way we found it. Um, that's that's something that that's really important to me, um, and so I want to you know lead those guys with compassion and love, and you know try and do everything I can to make them as good as they can be, so that you know when me and Wyatt and, and Thayer and, and some of the older guys are good, but they do the same thing, you know, with the young guys that they have, and, and I think that's that's one of the things that's the most important to me. Yeah, you know I'm picking. Piggybacking off of that, I will. Uh, I try to show them that I care. You know, reaching out to guys, asking guys how they're doing. You know, asking family, not just because I feel like I have to, but just because I, I, I genuinely care. I mean, these are crazy times, and um, I feel like as far as being a leader, the best thing you could do right now is just be vocal. And like Josh has said in the Zoom meetings. Being vocal, coaching up guys, um, you know, just talking to guys, just being there for them if they need need anything, if they need someone to talk to, and just, um, you know, me personally, like I, I've told all guys, if they ever need anything, like any hour of the day, they can call me. You know, like don't hesitate, and just being able to be available for them right now. I feel like it's what's like is is really important as being that leader for them. How much do you think it helps you guys as an offensive line that you do have your returning starters between you two and Thayer, and you already have some built-in chemistry with that? I think with the situation at hand, it definitely makes it a lot easier. Um, you know, we had to replace four guys last year. And this time was critical for us um, to to mold together. You know, Jonah had just come in, so getting to know him and holding as a group and spending time together was huge um, in our success last year. Um, so I think, given given the, you know the coronavirus and us not being together, I think the fact that we do have veterans. Um, you know, three three of us, um, I think, helps a lot. And I think I think that'll show when, um, you know, when we do finally get back and, and get back in things. Yeah, no, I agree. And, um, yeah, I, that's like the biggest difference. I mean, Josh can, I'm sure, attest to this. Going into the season last year, we had absolutely no clue what to expect. And, um, you know, coming back now, Foster, from that game day experience and 
and truly grinding a long season and just knowing, you know, how your body's going to feel by week 12 and, you know, that and just kind of how your body takes being done sleep. Um, understanding that and obviously playing at a high level during that time, I feel like is is um, it kind of gives us an edge coming back this year rather than last year. Two guys that had game experience, you know. So I feel like with this year having all three of us, we'll be able to push whoever fills in those spots and really get really fill them in and and um, you know push them when when the time get rough to end the season. Thanks, guys. Next up, Dave Biddle from 24-7 Sports with Doug LaMaurice on deck. Dave? Thanks, Jerry, and thanks for your time, Wyatt and Josh. Josh, there's been a lot of talk about this, but I'm curious to get the players' perspective. If there are not students, regular students back on campus, if they're taking online classes, at least to start the year, and there are no fans in the stands, would you guys want to play football this year? Um, I can't speak for Wyatt, um, and I think – for, for starters, for me, yes, absolutely. I would do anything really to play this season. Uh, I don't know, don't know what I would do without football, to be honest. With, um, but with that comes sacrifices, and I personally am so willing to make those sacrifices. And that would be doing whatever I need to do to quarantine, to make sure I'm not getting anyone else sick if I were to get. You know what I mean? So, in order to do it, I think we would have to do it in a very um, in a very orderly way, um, to just sure um, that other people um, aren't getting sick because of what we're doing. Um, yeah, yes, absolutely. I would, I would sign any waiver or anything that that would say that I'm willing to play. Um, and you know, I'd quarantine myself or do do whatever it takes. Thanks. And Wyatt, same question for you. Would you want to play football this year under those circumstances? Yeah, I'm, yeah. Uh, I, I definitely, like Josh, I, I would do anything to have this season. And what it would mean, you know, self quarantine, like he was saying, making sure that everyone, everyone's good. And, uh, as far as that, would it, I mean, would it, would it suck not having the fans there? Yes, but would that affect me not playing the season? No, um, just because you know I just love the game of football and I, I miss being in that competitive type of atmosphere. So fans or no fans, I, I would want to play. Thanks, fellas. I appreciate it. Next up, Doug Lay Maurice from Cleveland dot com with Joey Kaufman on deck. Doug. Kind of along those lines, guys, uh, for both of you, but I guess maybe Wyatt first, what would concern you the most if you guys did come back and play? Would you be – would you have concerns about might I get coronavirus? Would you have concerns about, you know, will we have enough time to train and practice and get ready and not risk injury for the season? What I'm sure as you think about it, maybe there's something you're a little worried about. What might that be, Wyatt? Yeah, um, you know, definitely, of course. And, um, <laughs> you know, there's, there's a long list of, of worries. But, you know, starting off, obviously, with this whole pandemic, the whole corona thing, uh, just making sure you're not spreading it around. And, you know, it's tough when you play football just because, you know, you got about 100 guys on the field sweating, grinding with each other. And, you know, as the, and stuff gets passed around and stuff like that. So I just feel, you know, worried about how, how we would handle the situation like as far as, like, how lifting goes and, you know. Um, but even besides that, just my so my concerns is, you know, just being sort of the game ready. I mean, not having spring ball was, at least for me, I, I feel like it was a very big deal, you know, just because spring ball is that time where you could truly focus on craft and, and fix those things, like start fixing those things that you weren't doing or you were doing uh, not correctly during the season leading into fall camp. You know, by fall camp, now you're 
we'll be tuned up and ready to go. So, um, you know, just just that worry of, of just having even a good season with all that's going on right now, being ready to play. You know, but those are all very real things. But at the end of the day, you can only worry so much, and you kind of just got to do what you got to do to put yourself in the position to be ready if that time comes and this point, I think that before Coach Nick has has gotten on and the workouts and stuff, I, I think that I'd be ready. But you know, those are some of the things I, I worry about at times. Josh, same for you. Uh, yeah, for me, I think the majority of my fears with actually getting the coronavirus myself um, are geared towards my family. Um, you know, I get it. Um, that's obviously not good, um, and I don't want to get it, but I would be significantly more worried at that point that I would give it to my parents uh, or to someone in my family and that, some, and that, God forbid, something terrible happens to them. And that's, to be honest with you, the thing that scares me by far the most about the virus. So being back in Columbus, um, you know, obviously I would not be with my family, and I probably it would, it would be unfortunate that I wouldn't get to see them. Um, but at least I would have, you know, that I would be sure that I, I couldn't give it to them if I could get it. Um, so I think in, in terms of just getting the coronavirus itself, that's, that's what I'm most afraid of. Um, and then in terms of, um, you know, being ready for the season, um, like Wyatt said, spring ball is, is huge. It's critical. It's critical for everybody, for the young guys um, to get some more experience. Um, and even it's still critical, you know, for, for me, why they I mean, we still have things that we want to work on. And that's, that's a huge time for us, like you said. Um, so it's really unfortunate that we aren't, <clears throat> we weren't able to do that. Um, and then in terms of, of being ready for the season, I think, um, I think the biggest thing is going to have to be trusting that what we did was enough and trusting that, you know, we're as ready as we can be. Uh, given the circumstances and hopefully hopefully um you know we're able to train for you know two weeks before we start hitting that would be you know probably the most ideal scenario in this situation um because i know uh if anybody can get us can get us completely right in two weeks it's coach mick um so you know if, if we don't two weeks and we have to hop right in um we just got to trust that what we was enough um and that we're ready Thanks, guys. Great. Next up, Joey Kaufman with the Columbus Dispatch with Stacy on deck. Joey? Hey, just following up on, on some of the last few questions that have been asked, either Wyatt or, or Josh, do you guys have any thoughts on if you guys are able to come to, to work out at the Woody or, or to practice, what kind of safety protocols or things you guys would feel comfortable doing as players, like temperature checks? Uh, COVID testing, like, do you have any thoughts on what you guys would like to have access to as players? Uh, well, uh, my bad, Josh, were you about to start off? Right. No, nah, yeah. All right. Well, you see, for me, this is something they've, that our coaches haven't even talked about, um, you know, as far as taking these next couple steps to getting things back to going. So, you know, definitely getting your temperature checked before you walk into the building, um, you know, having them. And um, as far as, like, if the time were to come back and we had a couple weeks of preparation before um, the season, like if we were still able to do workouts by the time, you know, having monitored groups, not having a bunch of guys going uh, um, at a time, and that's something that our coaches have been talked about you know what they that about what they do if we were able to come back right now. So I know that that's what Coach Dan has been saying. But um, yeah, I mean, you know, I'm not a doctor, so I, you know, I, I don't truly know everything that would go into making sure guys are are fine with the testing. But you know, I'm sure that our coaches would have a good system. From I mean, from Dang, it sounds like it would be a great system if we were able to come back as far as finding this, this thing. And our medical staff would, um, you know, they've been great throughout this whole entire thing, kind of telling us the do's and don'ts. So I feel like 
you know, they would have a plan for us if uh, we were able to get things rolling again. And then same question for Josh. Yeah, um, you know, with the details of it, I think Wyatt uh, hit it right on the, you know, the right on the head. Um, that's pretty much. I know, I know one thing that they've been been huge on is the is the if we did come back having like no more than a group of ten guys at a time, and and unfortunately we would have to work out. You know, it could be any time of the day. Um, you know, it could be a.m. or maybe even 5 a.m. to fit everybody in. Who knows? All the way till 8 p.m. at night. I mean, you know, who really knows? Um, so, you know, that'll be a different dynamic. Um, but I think I, I could speak for for pretty much everybody on our team when I say that we trust we trust coaches, we trust our medical staff, and um, we know that they're going to try and do right by us and, and keep us safe while also – you know, getting work in that we need to get in. Um, so, yeah. Thanks, guys. Great, guys. We're we're getting to time to wrap up. We'll try to get a few more questions in. Uh, next up, Mitch Stacy from the Associated Press with Tony Gerdman on deck. Mitch. Hey, you guys. Um, nobody knows what's going to happen to the 2020 season. What you know, it might be shortened or whether it's even going to be played at all. Um, how do, you, how do you feel about the thought of possibly losing that critical year of, you know, development and exposure, uh, you know, especially if your goal is to play you know, some. Uh, it's. Uh, uh, yeah, go Josh, ahead. You got it. Yeah. Uh, it's a nightmare, to be honest with you. Um you know that's that's time that that we can never get back. That's you know I I'm so, I was excited for this season and I'm you know I'm still hoping and praying you know that it, that it happens and I'm trusting that that it will. Um, yeah, it's a it's a critical time for for development still and just getting that much experience, um, and and elevating our games to you know even higher levels as high as we can possibly make them. Um, so the, even the thought of not playing this season is is terrifying and, and absolute worst case scenario. Um, Why? Yeah, yeah, no, I, no, I feel the same way. I mean, I was looking so forward to this season, especially just because you know I felt like last season I was barely breaching the surface, and I knew that this was you know that this is you know, it hasn't been canceled yet, and Obviously, I'm hoping it doesn't, but, you know, I know it's a very big year for me, and um, I feel like it was a very big year for our, our team, you know, coming coming off of that their sweet season this past year and I, how hard that we, we all worked during, the, you know, the off season leading up to this pandemic. Um you know, we hate to see it. I mean, I'm not going to say it in ways, but we just hate to be able to not, um, you know, use that for this season. And, you know, I know that our coaches would be very upset as well. And, um, uh, you know, losing that that extra year would definitely, would definitely hurt. At the end, we kind of have to have a, a backup plan. And if that were to happen... My, my backup plan for me was just to be even work even harder, you know, leading into the following year for um, the, the next season and just truly take them like truly getting after it and and trying to do as many game like reps as possible and you know just do whatever I can to be ready. Guys, Tony Gerdman from the Ozone, and then we're going to end it with Spencer Holbrook. Tony, you're up. I uh, I think Jerry Wyatt Jerry just told us earlier that you uh, had a 6 a.m. workout today, and I'm just wondering for both of you, Wyatt, you can start. What's your typical day like? What do you do today? Yeah, so uh, my routine every single day is I wake up at six, head down to the gym at um, 
640. Saw a workout, and I some change, lifting weights, and then I, I come back home, um, have meetings and stuff like that. And then after meetings, I go to a field that's near my house at about probably 2 o'clock my time and, uh, you know, do field work and do uh, position drills. And then at home, and that's, you know, that's the end of the day for me pretty much every single day. And I, I work, work out through Sunday. So pretty much at, literally every single day um, I'm up early getting – Trying to get these games, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my routine, yeah, my routine, I wake up at about 7.15 um, and go work out at 8. Um, and I, uh, I work out with my brother every morning. Um, and so he does the lift with me. And then we go and do our, our field work and drills right after our lift. Um, and I finish up typically around like eight or so, or uh, no, eight or so, ten or so. Um, and then after that, you know, I shower, uh, try and get some food, and then uh, have have uh, a meeting typically at noon. Um, they, and then after that, um, trying to uh, I'm trying to get everything set up for an internship right now. Um, for to be in order to graduate, I need certain amount of, of hours for an intern and so I'm working on getting that set up um, and you know how that kind of looks as of right now is, is not really uh, you know not really sure and, and neither is, is the people that I'm working with and so we're just trying to figure it out and, and so I do a lot of that the rest of the day and now that school started back up uh, any homework for school um, you know and then after that really just relaxing and, and hanging out with my family Thanks. All right, and final questions are going to come from Spencer Holbrook from Letterman Row. Spencer? Uh, Wyatt and Josh, for both of you guys, uh, what have you seen out of the, the two positions replaced on the offensive line um, through those three practices and then after that, just when you guys virtually meet, um, the, you guys some confidence that, that this offensive line can be just as good, if not better, than uh, last year's? Yeah. I, uh, go ahead, Wyatt. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, within those first three practices, I mean, we saw a lot of strides. And not even uh, spring ball. It was during the winter. You know, we we were fortunate to have a lot of guys early and come in early. And, yeah, it, it's just some of uh, this, this year, man, it was uh, – you've seen – we saw a lot of young guys like Matt Jones, Harry Miller, Nick Petit, Dewan starting to take that next step um, through the workouts, you know, grinding. And, you know, that ultimately led – and Paris Johnson, of course, too, um, and Luke Whippler. And pretty much all, all the early enrollees have just been awesome up to this point. And um, I just felt like as a unit we were taking such huge strides of uh, getting to a place that was better, in my opinion, from the start of spring. Because, um, you know, last year spring ball start for us, and Josh can attest to this, you know, we were in a very <laughs> rough spot, at least as far as the line. And, you know, after the first practice, I felt like personally that whether it was the first team, second team, or third team, you know, guys were getting after it, um, going against the defense. And I, I do truly believe that we can be better than we were last year just because of that culture that was instilled with last year's offensive line, which was playing nasty, physical, and just trying to dominate. And you could see that you could see it in these young guys, um, guys like Matt Jones. You saw it in the workouts. You know, he, he completely changed his whole mental. And he, he, you could just, you just, I just love seeing the fact that he's so willing to put the work in. Um, and Harry Miller, he's, he's been doing the same thing from the moment that he's got to Ohio State. And 
also seeing young guys like Paris Johnson. I mean, this guy, you know, we he he's already kind of stepping up as a leader for 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 the young guys. You know, he's leading the young guys around, and you know, I just love to see that. Yeah, I would uh, I would agree uh, wholeheartedly. I think as an offensive line unit, we were taking a huge step this spring, um, even just through the first week. You know, through the first practices, um, our young guys were taking huge steps, and you could tell. You know, I I could tell big time that that we had some guys that were going to get a little better this spring. Um, I think I think the competition for those two spots. You know, there isn't a clear cut answer um, as to who's going to start. I think the competition of that was driving all of them so hard, um, you know, striving for that spot. And, um, you know, they were, they were getting, they were getting better and it was fun to watch. And, um, you know, as of, as of who will start, um, I don't think any of us really know right now, time will tell, but I have all the confidence in the world. Um, and any of those guys, um, getting in the game and, and playing, um, and and I do, I agree, I think we'll be better um, because of that. And I think because of the culture that we instilled, you know, last season and, and the expectation, it became the expectation, not the exception, you know what I mean? Any, anything short of us, uh, you know, anything short of us all grading out as champions and, and nominating was considered a failure. And um, I think the young guys took note of that and, and are, are running with it and are trying to hold themselves to that level of expectation. Thanks for watching. Subscribe below to get the latest videos from Letterman Row. We've got Letterman Live, we've got the practice report, we got rapid reaction. Hey, and you know we got Buck IQ with Zach Bourne. For sure. We got recruiting breakdowns with Berm. We got whatever you need. Ohio State football and Ohio State Athletics, we've got you covered here at Letterman Row.